My name is Bob Schmidt, and I've been working in the field of facial recognition for about the last 12 years. About a year ago, a person named Albert Kaplan phoned me up and asked me if I could tell him whether or not a daguerreotype that he had was, in fact, a picture of Abraham Lincoln. Now, facial recognition is not like other biometrics in that it can't tell you with 100% certainty that two pictures are the same person. When you compare fingerprints of two people, for example, the prints either match or they don't match. It's either the same person or it isn't. The same is true in comparing two irises. It's either the same person or it isn't. But it's black and white. It is or it isn't. However, with face recognition, we do a much more approximate science, so we can never say with 100% certainty that the pictures we're looking at are the same person. But we do have tools to bring us to the point where we can make an informed decision about whether two people are indeed the same person. What we will do in this video is compare the daguerreotype to pictures and life masks of Abraham Lincoln and let you make a decision about whether or not you think it's the same person. This is a picture of the daguerreotype that Albert bought in 1977. If you look at the image, you'll see that many of the well-known features of Abraham Lincoln are the same. The droopy eyes, the high cheekbones, the rather large nose, and the prominent ears. But the thing that is also most obvious is that this person does not have the gaunt face that we see in so many of the later Lincoln photos. When I researched Lincoln, I found that during his life he gained and lost weight, sometimes dramatically. So based on that fact, it's not surprising that this could be a picture of Lincoln when he weighed more than he did as president. Now I'd like you to study Lincoln's face for a few moments. Look at the high hairline, the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears. These are the things that we'll be comparing. Now I'd like you to have a look at the left eyebrow of the person in the daguerreotype. It's an unusual eyebrow in that the hair is very full toward the center of the face but it abruptly thins as it moves outward. Now I want to show you two pictures of Lincoln when he was president, and you'll see the same pattern of the eyebrow. This is one of those small things that keeps adding up as we look at different images and pictures of Lincoln. We're very lucky to have two life masks that were made of Lincoln's face while he was president. One made by Leonard Volk in 1860 and the second one was made in 1865 by Clark Mills in Washington, D.C. Life masks are made by putting plaster on a person's face with appropriate holes for breathing and then letting it harden for about an hour before carefully removing the plaster. The result is a very detailed and precise 3D sculpture of the person's face. What this allows us to do today is to position the mask to the same angle as the daguerreotype and compare the two faces. You'll see the results of this in a few moments. The way we do facial recognition is to normalize all faces to the same size. We do this by making the distance between the eyes the same for all images. This has the effect of making all other features of the face proportionally the same so that we can compare features easily. If the faces were not normalized, then two noses might look the same, but if the features of the two faces are proportionally the same, then the noses, in fact, may look quite different. When we have normalized faces, we can then also compare mouths, facial structures, ears, chins, jaws, and so on. What we can't compare are the eyes, because all eyes are set the same distance apart, and therefore will all look pretty much the same. Having said that, however, you can look at the features of the eyebrows and see how they compare. 
it's often a very telling comparison. Now let's look at some familiar faces, and you'll see how facial recognition works when you try to compare them. The first one we'll look at is Hillary Clinton, her high school yearbook picture, and what she looks like now. I've normalized the faces, and now we can compare them. For the first comparison, we will split the two pictures vertically and slowly move a line across the two images and see how they compare. Remember, these are pictures that were taken 45 years apart. You can see how exact the features are today and when she was in high school. Now we will do a function that looks like morphing, but what we are actually doing is putting one image behind the other and then slowly fading out one image while we bring up the other one. Again, you can see the young Hillary becoming the older Hillary and how perfectly the features match. Now let's do the same thing with Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We have two pictures of Roosevelt, one when he was 29, and then in his last term as president. Let's look at how the two images compare. What is significant as you look at these images is how the features all line up perfectly, even much later in life. The face ages, but the features stay the same. Again, if we morph the two images, you can see how the young Roosevelt slowly becomes the old Roosevelt, but all of the images and all of the features of the face remain exactly the same. Now you know the basics of how we compare images, how we make sure that all features are proportionally the same and can make the visual comparison that tells us that these are the same people. Now let's see what happens when we don't have two people who look alike. In this case, let's take Roosevelt and Truman and compare them. As you can see, there is no similarity at all. You would know immediately that they were not the same person. As we morph from one to the other, notice the difference in the size of the head, in the jawline, and in the location of the mouth in relationship to the eyes. It's significantly different. I realize that I might have been confusing you with the colors of the life masks. Some of them are a golden color and some of them are the natural plaster color. I have shown you two of the masks made by Volk and two made by Mills, but there are only two masks. The colors are different, but as you will see, the features are the same regardless of the color. Now we're gonna start doing facial recognition on Lincoln. We have here the two life masks that we know are the images of Abraham Lincoln. We're gonna compare these two images, take a look at the features, and see how the two images line up. The first thing that we'll do is drag the vertical line across the two images and go from one to another, and you'll be able to see how the features on the two masks line up. The eyes, of course, will line up, but we really can't compare them. But you can look at the features and see how they line up perfectly.
Now there's a strange phenomenon in these two masks that you'll see as we do the comparison. And that is that in one, the ears are very close to the head, and in the other one they stick out more faithful to the actual Abraham Lincoln. You'll also notice that one mask is much thinner than the other. This is attributed to the fact that Lincoln was losing a lot of weight from the time from 1860 to 1865 when the last mask was produced. You can clearly see in the face how much he's changing during this time. Now we'll take the two masks and slowly morph from one to the other and again you'll see that the features are identical. But of course we would expect them to be because this is the mask of the same person taken five years later. Soon we'll look at pictures and see how those comparisons come out. Now let's take a picture of Abraham Lincoln and the life mask and see how those two compare. As you can see when we move across, we have the same phenomenon that we had with the two life masks. We can see that the features line up almost exactly. The mouth is in the same place, the nose is in the same place, the cheekbones are in the same place. It really, really looks like it's the same person. And again, even without the mole, we'd be able to tell that this was Abraham Lincoln by the by the features on the face and how those features line up perfectly with the features that are on the mask. If we morph between the two faces, you can see how well the features line up and how the real picture of Lincoln morphs perfectly into the mask and vice versa. So there's no question in our mind that this is in fact Abraham Lincoln and his mask and that's how we can use facial recognition. Now let's try someone that we know isn't Lincoln. A lot of people have said that Jefferson Davis looked a lot like Abraham Lincoln and he does. Except when you start using some of these facial recognition techniques, you can see that the nose is completely different, the mouth is completely different, the jawline is completely different. There's no way that you would say that these were the same two people. And if you morph from one to the other, you can see how things change so dramatically from one picture to the other. So this is how you can use facial recognition in a sort of negative sense. So now let's get to the reason why we're here. Is this in fact the oldest picture of Abraham Lincoln that we know of? Well, let's compare it first of all to a picture of the older Abraham Lincoln. You've seen the techniques, now you watch and see what you think as we move from the old man to the young man. Look at the way the nose lines up. Look at the mouth. Look at the perfect symmetry between the mouth and the ears. I mean, there's no question that this is a very, very close, if not identical, person. Now let's look as the young Lincoln morphs into the old Lincoln. Again, as you see the image behind one image come forward and replace the original image, you can see how closely the features line up and how identical the various parts of the face are from one to the other.
Now let's take a look at the mask. And here we'll see how the mask and the daguerreotype, again, look so similar in terms of features and the alignment of features on the face. You'll also notice how well the faces line up, even if I don't have the mask and the daguerreotype exactly at the same angle. And finally, we have the picture of the young Lincoln and the old Lincoln. In this case, we have an almost identical setup in terms of the angle of the face. And you can see how well the features line up between the daguerreotype and the picture. You will also see the same phenomenon when you look at the morphing from one image to another. What you've seen in this video are some of the ways in which faces are compared by professionals trying to do identity matching. It's a way of breaking a face into component parts for comparison and to be able to highlight the similarities and differences. You've seen the images and have a sense of how facial recognition works. The question is, what do you think? I've been studying this video for over a year, and there's no doubt in my mind that this is indeed a picture of Abraham Lincoln. The eyes, the eyebrows, the nose, the mouth, the chin, even the ears are so similar that it's almost startling. This has to be Abraham Lincoln. Thank you very much.